Good morning. What a great day to be on the Lord's side, still working on his program, still available to him to be used by his spirit to share Jesus Christ with someone. And today we are moving along in the section that we've been going through for now for the past 19 weeks, but now this is the 20th week that we've been in Salvation is Safe. An important topic for us and, and because it is that question that is always asked and when people mess up in their life and they've trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they wonder if backsliding put them out of the love of God, put them to a place where they weren't able to be saved and they're not saved anymore. And even the, the thought that comes in where people say, if you die in your sins, I believe some time people don't understand what that means. That means that you never trusted Jesus Christ because there's no way that you can die in your sins if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you don't have any sins. You, your sins went to the grave with Jesus Christ. They were there at the cross, nailed to the cross in that bitter cup that he drank up and he rose again, leaving the sin behind, and it can't affect your salvation or your eternal security in him. So a person that is once saved, they're always saved. If they were never saved, then they can't be saved. And many people have confused those particular things there and think that they, uh, because a person doesn't seem to be saved anymore, Maybe they never trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because John was quite clear when he said in, in, in 1 John, the second chapter, that those that, that are in Christ, that came to him, they would stay with him. Because if they were with him, it would have been manifested in their life that they would have stayed. And they left out from us only to make manifest that they never were a part of us. So if, if we're in the Lord, he has us. His love is always there to, to save us and keep us because we don't know what ha would happen in our life. Even after we get saved, we might lose our mind and, and something happens in that. And man think that something is messed up, that God has thrown you away, but God doesn't even think on the same level that man thinks on. It has been a, a popular topic and People say it all the time. You've heard it. I've heard it. And, and Dr. McGee talked about it plainly. He said that a young man came up to him one day and he had on the, the, a shirt that had love all over the shirt. His, his, his pants had love all over him. His shoes had love on them. And, and he asked the man, he said, why do you have love all over yourself? And he said, because God is love. He said, Dr. McGee said, I, I agree with you there. He said, and then the guy said, then he saved me by his love. He said, well, I don't agree with you there. Well, sometimes people listen to one of our popular songs, and they get confused. But go, let's read the scripture, and I'm going to even read that popular song. But let's go to Ephesians, the fourth, the second chapter, and let's just deal with verse four through nine in this chapter. Verse four of that fourth of the second chapter of Ephesians says, "But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ." By grace, you're saved and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. As the end there at the ninth verse, we stop there. That, that song that we was talking about, because when people say that they, they I was saved by his love, they, they might think that the hymnologist was saying that too. When James wrote, wrote the love lifted me, maybe they thought that. But here's the words that he said. He said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, 
from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his presence daily live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul best song. Faithful loving service to, to him belong. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He's your savior, wants to be, be saved today. Then the refrain, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. James Rowe didn't say that love saved me. It said that the love lifted me. And that's precisely what Jesus was talking about there in the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, the, the 16th verse, when he let us know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The love didn't save. He gave. The love gave. Love, God is love. He, 1 John 4 and 8 says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love himself. So the, the fourth verse starts out in, in this chapter. It says, but God. The reason that it starts out there, but God, is because of the previous verses that came, came before this. The first through the third verse was telling us that we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were far from the peaceful shore, sinking to rise no more. That is what, what, what Paul was talking about in those first verses. Then he starts the fourth verse and he says, but God, because we were about to be sent away to hell with the devil because it's not the devil's hell. It's a place that was created for him, but we go there because we decide to, to turn away from the so great a salvation that came through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So, but God, God came in who is rich in, his, in mercy. Now, mercy, let's understand mercy because mercy is the, not getting the punishment that we should receive. We've gone over that many times, but not street rock getting the punishment that we deserve the punishment. We have, we have committed the sin. We have earned the wages of sin. We are supposed to get the wages. The wages is, is always the same thing. I don't care how big the sin is. The wages is death. There in, in the, the th sixth chapter of Romans, the 23rd verse. It, but he says, he, 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 God is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. He loved us. The, the, the reason that he gave his son was because of this awesome love, because of who God is. The very essence of God is love. God is a spirit, Jesus said, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But, but, but John let us know also that God is Love, the very, when we even pass out love ourselves, it's because of our, uh, because of our association with God, because we are created in his likeness. That's why we display love. And when we give out that love, it's because of our, our link to God. But his love was so great that it reached out even beyond what we can even comprehend or understand because if it was our child that we had to give up because of people that were rejecting God, re rejecting us, that hated us, couldn't stand us at the at that present time, would we have sent our own child to die for that person? But God did. He did love us to that degree. He loved us so much that he gave his own son. And then verse five says, even when we were dead in sin, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ, has made us alive in Christ. 
And, and, and then the Apostle Paul just couldn't help but say it even before he wanted to write it in. So he put it in parentheses that says, by grace are ye saved. He said, even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ, made us, to get, made us alive together with Christ it, because Christ is alive now. He's already been dead before. And because we have linked ourselves to Christ, we linked ourselves to his death. And, and in that death, we, he took our sins far away and he left them behind. He, he rose again. He buried death and judgment came upon Christ. Even though he had no sin, he did have the weight of death and judgment on him and he took them and that but now we have been made alive with Christ because he has died we have died in that same way and made alive here on the other side of this yes we still have a link to the flesh in this life but after we have accepted Jesus Christ that can't hurt us from getting ourselves into our eternal life because of what Jesus did, because it's not even in our hands anymore. Verse six says, and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The first thing he did, he quickened us. He made us alive there in the fifth verse. But now in the sixth verse, it says he raised us up together with Christ, uh, raised us up with Christ. We just talked about that. He raised us up together, brought uh, as Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead and made us to sit together. God wants to have fellowship with his people. And, and we now that we have trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are in Christ. So when God looks at us as bad as we might seem ourselves and to ourselves and others look at us thinking that we're bad, God looks at us and he sees us in heavenly places because we are robed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Notice I said in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The Isaiah let us know that our righteousness is as filthy rags in the 64th chapter of Isaiah, verse 6. It says, verse, verse 7 says, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. God would, would be able to show his his exceeding, the exceeding riches of his grace in the ages to come. When people look at us in heaven, when we look at one another in heaven, I don't know how much we will remember, but if we were able to remember one another, I, you might look at me and say, you mean he really did save you to the point that you can get into heaven? It, it, it my goodness, his grace is awesome. My goodness, his grace is truly, as John Newton would say, amazing. We would just say that his grace is amazing. Said in that, in that age to come that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his in his kindness toward us. Why? Because it is through Jesus Christ. Always back to Jesus Christ. And then that verse that we can recite by heart. It says in this eighth verse, for by grace are ye saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. This is something that, that's hard for us to grasp and understand. We talked about this and, and we, we say it all the time, but I wonder if we really let it let it kind of get into us to where we just just kind of muddle in it and, and stay right there and understand how big and great God's grace is. Because even the getting to the grace, even the faith part of it, see it says by grace are you saved. Now he said that in the in the fifth verse. But now the Apostle Paul writes it to the church here at Ephesus again. He says, for by grace are ye saved, not will be saved. That's the way that you got to say. That's, that's, that's where you are right now. That's your position right now. By grace, you're saved. You're saved. But how did you get to the grace? You got to the grace through faith. 
through your belief, through what you believed about the person Jesus Christ. And how did you have the faith? Let me tell you something. That is not of yourselves, Paul said. You didn't even have the faith nor the grace. You didn't get that of yourselves. You say, well, wait a minute. I I, didn't I have the faith? Didn't I trust? Didn't I believe? That, well, dead men don't have faith. They're just dead. You were dead in trespasses and sins. So where would the faith come for a dead person? Well, Jesus said it himself. He said in the sixth chapter of the gospel according to St. John, he said, no man can come to me except my father, which has sent me, draw him. It, it, the person can't come to me unless my father draw him is what Jesus says. As a matter of fact, Paul said in Romans 3 and 11, he said that there is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after God. We talked about that last week in the message. There are none that seeketh after God. So how did we get to this point? It was through God him, himself. He did this and put you in his beloved before the foundation of the world that we talked about three weeks ago when we said that when did he write your name in the book of life? Your name was written in the book of life. God doesn't use an eraser because if he did it in his foreknowledge, wrote your name in the book of life, he would have known that he needed to not write it in there because he has foreknowledge. So he wrote you in the book of life and you will will be saved in the end. He did it according to his foreknowledge. So for by grace are ye saved through faith. You didn't even have the faith. That was something that God even got. It, it is not of yourselves. You and I didn't do it. We didn't have enough in us to be able to get to the point where we could save ourselves. And, and that would be totally in opposition of what God intended when he sent his only begotten son. If you were able to save yourself, he'd have just kept Jesus back. Uh, and, and, and the rest of us that couldn't do as good as you, that, then we'd have all been just headed to hell. But because none of us, because of our link to Adam, because of Adam, Romans 5 and 12, all men die because of all men of sin. Because of our link to Adam, we, we're, we're dead in trespasses and sins. We come here dead men walking, but because of Jesus Christ, for by grace, that unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God, he saved us. How did we get there? Through faith that he put in us to even trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And because of that, he is very merciful in, in his loving kindness toward us. We don't get the punishment that we should get. Some people say, well, you, you're going to get punished for everything. Wait a minute. You're not going to get punished for everything because the way, the way that you receive punishment, you'd be headed to hell because of the things that you have done. The wages of sin are still the same. So somebody had to deal with the punishment. Jesus Christ dealt with that, and you get that by his unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. It is a gift of God, it says right there at the end of the eighth verse. A gift. The Apostle Paul didn't, didn't say here to the church at Ephesus that it is a free gift. Because if a gift is not free, then, then it's not a gift. So he says it is the gift of God. It is something that God gives freely to you. And he also gives it a way that man have trouble giving a gift. He gives it unconditionally. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that uh, tomorrow you mess up or, or I don't like you tomorrow. I come take it back. God is not like that because we just stated before, uh, beforehand that God is love. No matter how bad that person gets, their link to him is through the person of Jesus Christ. And, and, and because of that relationship, we have the blood of Jesus in us and he keeps us and we receive this gift because he's always looking at his son, looking at us through the grid of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. It is a gift. It is freely given to us and it's unconditional. It's not based on whether you mess up or something tomorrow. He's given you this gift. It's, that gift is what gave you this salvation. That salvation is eternal and is safe because it's tied up in the person of Jesus Christ, his son. Then the, the apostle Paul finishes out. He says, not of works, not anything that we could do that's so good to earn it. No merit of this at all. 
There's no, no there's nothing that you and I can if we did have to do it, works to do it. How much work could we do? So that's not even included. Lest any man should boast. None of us can go out and say, Lord, look how good I've been. I'm better than those people over there. So I deserve your salvation. I deserve grace and, and, and never have to trust. And, and so it's not faith plus something else. The moment that something else is included, it's not through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's because of what Jesus Christ did alone on the cross. He was the one that died for our sins. He was the one that had that horrible beating before he went to the cross. He was the one that had the crown of thorns pressed down into his skull. He was the one that had the nails put in his hands and feet and hung up before Christ rejecting world. And to the point that he, he suffered there it, it, as asphyxiation where it finally when he decided that, that that's enough, he said it's finished and he dropped himself on that nail and decided not to hold himself up and he, he suffocated and died there on the cross for our sins. But that wasn't the end of it. The reason that we're in heavenly places is because when he died, he took care of our death and our judgment, not for his own but for ours, he took care, care of it there on the cross and he left the death behind and he raised again us into new life. When he got up from the grave, he came out with all power in his hand and all that trust the fact that God raised him from the dead. The apostle Paul said in Romans 10 and 9 that thou shalt be saved. No doubt about it. He told these people that for by grace are ye saved through faith. Not will be, you are saved through faith. Your salvation is safe in the person of Jesus Christ. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds and help us truly understand what the Apostle Paul is saying to us as, as well as he was talking to the church at Ephesus in the second chapter of Ephesians. Father, we do love you. We pray that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining in on our Sunday church services. We hope we will see you next week. God bless you all.